Now we're going to start part 3 which is the last part in this topic. Here we will cover types, trend and approach towards developing information system and at the end we will have summary for the whole topic. What is ICE development methodologies? It is a comprehensive guidelines to follow for completing every activity in the system development life cycle, including specific models, tools, and technique. Here, there are seven IS development methodologies and its example. Number one, process oriented, for example, Stradis methodology, Gain and Sassen methodology, Yodan system method, and Jackson system development. Number two, blended. For example, structured system analysis, system analysis and design method. Number three, object oriented, such as Butch method, OOSE, OMT, unified approach methodology, and rational unified process. Number four, rapid. For example, James Martin's RAD, extreme programming, and web IS development methodology. Number five, people oriented such as common cats, ethics, and cats. Number six, organizational oriented, such as soft system methodology, IS work and analysis of changes, process innovation, and project and control environments. And lastly, number seven, framework, multi-view, strategic option development and analysis, and capability maturity model. Next, we will learn about system development life cycle approaches such as traditional system development life cycle, object oriented system analysis and design, and case system development life cycle. There are two general approaches to system development. The first one is the traditional approach or structured approach, and the second one is object oriented approach. All system developers should be familiar with these two general approaches because they form the basis of virtually all the other methodologies. Object-Oriented System Analysis and Design It is alternate approach to the structured approach of the SDLC that is intended to facilitate the development of systems that must change rapidly in response to dynamic business environments. The analysis is performed on a small part of the system followed by the design and implementation. The cycle repeats with analysis, design, and implementation of the next part, and this repeats until the project is complete. Here we can see a few examples of structured methodologies and object-oriented methodologies. We have Stratis, SSADM, JSD, YSM, and more. For object-oriented, we have Butch, OMT, OOSA, Unified Approach, Rational Unified Process, and more. Here we can see the difference between structured and object oriented. We see here the problem. The structured will focus towards the process itself, while for object oriented, it will be focused towards the object. What is case tools? Case tools are productivity tools for system analysts that have been created explicitly to improve their routine work through the use of automated support. There are four reasons for using the case tools. First is to increase analyst productivity. Second, to improve the analyst user communication. Third, integrating lifecycle activities. And fourth, accurately assessing maintenance changes. This figure shows the case tools classification. We have two main types. The first one is the uppercase. The second one is the lowercase. And both of them is called integrated case. In the uppercase, we have planning, analysis, and design. The uppercase tools perform analysis and design and mainly for analysts and designers. For lowercase, we have implementation, testing, and maintenance. For lowercase tools, it generates programs from case design and mainly used by programmers. 
integrated case perform both upper and lower case functions. Now we focus on the upper case tools. Why is it important? It is important in order to create and modify the system design. It also helps in modeling organizational requirements and defining system boundaries. Besides that, it can also support prototyping of screen and report design. As for lowercase tools, it is important in order to generate computer source code from the case design, and the source code is usually generated in several languages. Here we can see the differences between the traditional versus case system development lifecycle. Both have five phases, but here is the main difference in program design and coding for the traditional and uppercase toolset for case system. If you can see in the traditional system, in program testing and installations, we can still go back to the previous phase to fix installation bugs and program bugs and error. But for case system development, if we go directly towards lowercase toolsets, the code generator, and then you will have an error-free computer system for the installation process. There are several alternate system development lifecycle approaches such as Agile Approach, Prototyping, Ethics, Project Champion, Soft System Methodology, and Multiview. From this figure, you can see the main components of methodology. First, we have techniques, then we have tools, and then we have models. What is techniques? Techniques is a collection of guidelines that help an analyst complete a system development. It consists of six main samples. Strategic planning, user interviewing techniques, data modeling techniques, software testing, project management, structure analysis and design. What is tools? Tool is a software tool that helps create models or other components required in the project. There are six main samples of tools. We have case, drawing graphics applications, reverse engineering tool, code generator tool, database management application, and word processor. What is model? Model is a representation of some important aspect of the real world. There are six main samples of model. The first one is flowchart, and then followed by data flow diagram, entity relationship diagram, structure chart, class diagram, and sequence diagram. Now we've come to the topic summary. As you know, Information is a key resource towards the organization. System analysts deal with many types of information systems across the organization. You now see the importance of the integration of the traditional systems with new technologies, and you must understand the roles and qualities of the system analysts. You also must now have greater understanding of the system development lifecycle and case tools, and recognize the alternatives to structured analysis and design and to the SDLC. This slide shows the overall picture of system analysis and design. As you can see, you must go through a step-by-step -step process in order for you to make the final output or present your system. This slide is based on Kendall and Kendall 2014 book named System Analysis and Design 9th edition. You can find this book and use it as your main references and to get more understanding. Now we have come to the end of the lecture. Feel free to ask anything and I think you can use the references to get more understanding of this subject. Thank you.